Hello everyone, great to have you here on the channel of Mark Weather. Welcome, this is a special edition on Francine. We're just gonna be covering Francine for this video for today. This is very important coverage. This right here is our three-dimensional satellite view. We are expecting explosive development overnight into the day on Wednesday. Let's get into it. And here we are analyzing the three-dimensional satellite view. You can see the cloud tops right around the center of circulation, perfect symmetrical uh, design of this system now. It has a lot going for it. So yes, it did ingest some dry air on the south side of it last night into this morning. And there was some wind shear on the northern side, but that has since slackened a little bit. The wind shear is way up here in Louisiana. So this is going to continue to intensify. Look at that explosive development right around the center of circulation. And here we go, overlaying our expected track here. This is going to come up very close to Category 2. I would not be surprised if this still strengthens just before landfall up to category two but if we zoom out you can see where the projected path of francine is likely to go all right so we're going to dive right into the hurricane model here the hwrf let's see what we got going on with this latest run of it let's see here let's tell you how far we can go the 18z run so as we head into the overnight here it is rapidly intensifying this is 11 a.m on wednesday morning so you can see it Right around here, a 974 millibar low lining up with our main models, European and the GFS. Now, I don't know how far. There we go. I can get to landfall on this one. This is landfall 970 millibars. You can see this model has come a little bit back to the west ever so slightly, but it's much further east than it was yesterday. So you can see. Here's the east side, New Orleans. It's going to be heading feeder bands right into all the eastern and southeastern parishes of Louisiana here. This is not good news because let me just back this up. I can show you the evolution of these feeder bands coming on shore. This is like a buzzsaw. And that's the problem with intensifying hurricanes. The storm surge really starts to get kicked up. You have this forward motion of these showers and thunderstorms. And look at here on the east side here. That is where some intense feeder band action is going to help pile on some of the water. And as you can see, this is 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So landfall is right around five, between 5 and 6. There, you can see it on Wednesday evening. And then it heads inland. It's still 974 millibars just west of New Orleans here. So we can see our last frame. It now has the center still a 980 millibar low here. So it's plausible that we could have a hurricane barreling into the northern and western part of New Orleans here. And I want to bring you over here to the Mississippi, Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. Look at this nasty line here. This is, a, this is the main feeder band. Pascagoula there, Gulfport, maybe as far east as Pensacola, Pensacola here, and Mobile. So, yeah. This is definitely going to be a thing as we head into Wednesday and Wednesday evening. So let's take a look at our wind simulation here on our HWRF model. You can see that purplish wind. We're getting up into that 80 to 85 knot right around the center of circulation. This is 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And there it is nearing the coastline here. You can see the Louisiana coastline. It's going to come in. And some of that wind is going to make it into New Orleans and all these southeastern parishes as well of Louisiana. There's the eastern eye wall making it in to Lake Pontchartrain here. That is a little disturbing. And look at this, the wind really kicking up across southern Mississippi and Alabama all the way over to the panhandle of Florida. So let's see how our, our European models handling this. You can see as we go out here in time, very similar location targeting parts of South Central and Southeastern Louisiana, 5 p.m. on Wednesday here, late afternoon, early evening. And as we continue to go here in time, let's see if we can get this to move ahead. There we go. So the only good saving grace is it is going to be moving fast. So here it is, 2 a.m. There's the Eastern Eye Wall into and what's left of it into parts of new orleans and then it starts to accelerate up the highway here 55 to jackson as we head through 11 a.m on thursday morning and you can see all the way up to memphis by about the time of 8 p.m on thursday so this is going to become an inland 
heavy rain and tornado producer. That is going to be the big worry on the east side of the storm. And if we just continue to go out just a, a tad here, you can see we're going to be dealing with the remnants of this storm through the 15th here, the 16th, for quite some time here. And I wanted to make note, we are going to have the potential for an East Coast system. I am going to be covering this a little bit later in the week here, most likely on Thursday evening. This is 916, so we got a little bit of time to watch this, but we will keep an eye on it here. So here's our GFS model. Let's take a look and we'll compare it to our hurricane model and the European model. Here we go. Rapid intensification showing up here on the GFS as well. This is 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning here, September 11th. You can see it right off the coast, barreling to the northeast here. Here's 2 p.m. And then let's get it to right around... Here it is. There's 8 p.m. GFS starts to slow it down towards the coastline here. So that is pretty interesting. 990 millibar low here on the GFS. So a little bit weaker here, so to speak. It'll be interesting to see. But this is a this model has been further east than all of them. This literally brings the eastern eye wall right into southeastern Louisiana and New Orleans. Up to Slidell and Gulfport here. So please... Heed those hurricane, there's hurricane watches extending further east now. So please heed those hurricane watches, tropical storm warnings, and hurricane warnings. You can see by 11 p.m. and then it's starting to book it up 55 here uh, towards Jackson as we get into 5 a.m. on Thursday morning. And there it is, booking it all the way up to Memphis here by 2 p.m. on Thursday. And then, of course, it turns around and then... We may have to deal with a tropical system here hitting North Carolina. Both models now are showing right around the 16th, 17th time frame for North Carolina. All right, so here's a product I like to use on the HWRF model. This is simulated satellite. Gives us a really good, look at that. Just right now, the core is really intense, intensifying here, so to speak. So let's just go out a bit here. We can get a little bit further out. Look at the explosive development here. Now, one thing that's going to start to really affect this system to the north, there is some vertical wind shear up here towards Louisiana, and that could be some of our saving grace. But you see, we go from, there it is, 2 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. And, of course, you can see a very solidified storm at this point. Classic buzzsaw, almost. You can see... Most of the thunderstorm action right around the center here and these eastern feeder bands is where we're going to get a tremendous amount of rain and wind and surge. And then, of course, as we head through about 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening, it does start to weaken, obviously, get some dry air and trained into it. And, of course, that upper level wind shear. But you can see the core still intact here over New Orleans. So this is a trend we're going to have to keep an eye on. This is pushing ever so slightly as hour by hour we go into uh, this. And look at this. I want to make note of something here. This is rather interesting. This model is wanting to push a lot of the thunderstorm action. And if we get a timestamp on here, this is 2 a.m. on Thursday morning, all the way over here into Alabama in the panhandle of Florida. And thanks to Tropical Tidbits here for our intensity analysis. There it is, Category 1. We're running out of opportunity for Category 2, but I still would not be surprised if this touches Cat 2 briefly off the coastline or just near landfall. So just keep that in mind. All right, so looking at our moisture forecast here, you can do see start to see here with our system, we have some dry air mixing in on the south side of it uh, just before landfall here. You can see it getting sucked in the southern end of this. So this may cut off. You can see it eventually really wrapping in here. So that's the only thing other than the wind shear as it approaches shoreline that could really cut the system off as well. And if we take a look at wind shear here, this is a thing that's really going to be destructive to the system once it reaches the coastline. You can see it's reaching this area of red. This is more than 50 knot shear. This is a lot of wind in the upper layers and mid layers of the atmosphere. So we're going to be watching this. Once it reaches the coastline, definitely it's going to weaken pretty rapidly. But out over the much of the uh, trajectory that it has 
all the way to the Louisiana coastline. It has very light wind shear. And here you can see the Gulf is running very warm here. There's just a tiny patch here along the most of the western uh, Louisiana down to coastal Texas that has some upwelling going on. It's a little bit cooler, but very still very warm water temperatures throughout much of the Atlantic as well. And here's the peak storm surge forecast. You can see 5 to 10 feet here from Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge over to Port uh, Fortune here. And look at this, even 4 to 7 just south of New Orleans. This is well south of New Orleans, actually. 3 to up to six feet here into parts of New Orleans, all the way over to the Mississippi and Alabama borders. Here into the blue, it's about one to three feet. So definitely watch out here. If we took a, take a look here, the National Hurricane Center putting out those warnings. There's a hurricane warnings in effect. We also have hurricane watches out here in New Orleans where the tropical storm warning, those will likely be upgraded, I think, to hurricane warnings. And there's their product on heavy rainfall potential, 12 to 16 inches just off the coast with 8 to 12 inches here. Uh, just west of New Orleans and look at the swath of four to six and six to eight inches here into the orange yellows and oranges as well so let's look at rainfall amounts here we'll go with Texas first because you're getting the rain Brownsville all the way up to Houston Beaumont Port Arthur here even into far northeast Texas and eastern Texas you could get a solid two for some of these areas above four inches so watch out for that it's Louisiana here especially south central Louisiana up here towards New Orleans. Watch that. We just put that into motion. You can see that band of basically 7 to 10 inches with locally higher. I would not be surprised if some areas get up to 12 inches. And then getting over here further into the southeast, this is going to stretch pretty far to the east Mississippi, parts of Alabama, Georgia here. Look at the Panhandle of Florida. We could be seeing these eastern feeder bands well east here, upwards of 4 to 8 inches in some of these areas. Watch out. The only saving grace is the forward speed of the system, but still, it is going to drop a tremendous amount of rainfall. So as we go through the rest of the tropics here, I didn't want to leave the rest of you guys out here. We have a lot to talk about. We got this big system out here that's likely to develop. This front frontal system here is likely to really just start to fizzle out here, so we're not going to see too much in the way of activity, but it's this second system behind it here. That is where we're really going to start to see uh, some major issues here, and that is actually with Invest 93L, right back here towards the Cape Verde Islands. So as we just put this into motion, you can see this propagating towards the west here. There's going to be a couple systems we're going to be watching. One, there's Invest 93, and then our next system trying to form off the southeast coast towards the 15th here. So as we continue to put this into motion, you can see the Caribbean for the most part, except near Nicaragua, as we head through the next week, has some showers kicking up. But look what we're going to be looking at. We could be looking at a landfalling storm here in North Carolina, as well as this system really rapidly intensifying here across the Atlantic. And could that actually, that system along the East Coast heading inland there and then up through the mid-Atlantic, and this may be recurving out here to the open Atlantic. And look at this. Things start to become a little bit active down here through the Southern Caribbean. And we'll be watching the intertropical convergence zone as well. All right, so let's take a look at your rainfall totals here across the Caribbean. Not too much except towards the weekend in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Central America looking drier until next week. Northern Bahamas is where it's at, though. 100 millimeters upwards of three inches, three to four inches. And here into the Eastern Caribbean, we're going to be looking at that wave across the Virgin Islands, parts of Puerto Rico. Most of this will be over the next week. You can see upwards of 60 to 90 millimeters, upwards of, say, about two to three inches. And before we continue with more weather, check out these awesome, amazing maps that you won't find anywhere else. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. 
So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code.